Hey guys, Crystal here at Crystal's Crafties. Today's tutorial, we are going to be making flip text. That is where the text starts to um, flip through like a book from top and then it actually mirrors itself and flips through the bottom. So here's one example. Here is another one and um, that word's a little longer. So it's flip effect looks a little different. Um, and we're gonna be making these in Inkscape. Um, I do want to apologize before we even start. Um, I don't get to say this very often, but I'm in Texas and uh, we're bracing for a winter storm. We're gonna be getting snow here in a few days. And so all I can hear outside my window is major howling wind. It is like a howl fest out there. I pray that you guys can't hear that, but if you can, I apologize. Okay, and also let me get this out of the way before we even get started. I get this question all the time when I do an Inkscape tutorial. People say, can I do this in Canva? Yes, you can do this in Canva, but it is far more complicated and you can't put it on a transparent background if you create it in Canva um, based on the type of shadow graphics that you have to add. Um, I'm not going to show how to do it in Canva just because it is too complicated and I don't really like the end effect. But if that's something that you want to look at after you see this, um, feel free to YouTube search that up. Okay, so let's get started. I think I'm actually going to recreate this howdy one here. So the first thing that we need, um, I've got my document sized to 3000 by 3000 pixels. I've come over into File, Document Properties, and that is where I set that up. If you are not familiar with Inkscape, if you don't have it downloaded, I will leave a link down below where you can um, see how I have got mine all set up and you can follow along with that. Inkscape is free. Um, there is absolutely no charge to download it and use it. Okay, so let's start with our word. In that other example, we had the word howdy, so I'm just gonna get the caps lock on my computer here. I'm gonna come over to my left menu and type on the text tool. And then I will click on my screen and type howdy. <laughs> now, you can't see that. That's because the last color I used was white. I'm just gonna come in here and click black so that you can see it. And it is also pretty small and it is not the font that we want. No worries though. After I've got my word typed, I'm going to click my selector tool so that I can get out of the text tool. If I had stayed in this text tool and I start typing around anywhere, I'm just getting more cursors. I need to come into the selector tool. And now if I click this word, I can increase the size. I do also have my screen locked. Um, unlocking your screen lets you skew in all different sizes. Locking your screen just enlarges and um, shrinks down what you have there. Now let's change this text now that we can see it and now that it is white. So I'm gonna come back into my text tool. Um, Inkscape does not have its own fonts. Inkscape works off of whatever you have installed on your computer. So you will have to download some fonts onto your computer to get this to work. I get all of my fonts from Creative Fabrica and I will link to the font that I'm going to use. But for this one, um, I've clicked back into my text tool so that my uh, little font box will pull up up here. And it is called Monday. So I'm just going to scroll down until I get to Monday. Then I can click that. Oh man, let's try that again. You have to select your word first, then click into your a text tool and then you can change the font okay so that is what we're gonna do for that that is a little large I'm just going to shrink it down and let's go ahead and change up the color of this I'm using my color box down here depending on how you have your Inkscape set up this may look very different for you um, but again, do check out that tutorial where I show you how to set up everything like I have it here. And I think I used like this kind of a green. Yeah, that looks like it was what I used. Okay, now something else you don't have to do. It is absolutely not required, but I like the way it looks is to make the bottom of these words. Let me even pull this one up again. Kind of transparent. 
so that when you're stacking them on top of each other, um, let me just see if I can pull this over here and really show you. When you're stacking them on top of each other, it's not a jumbled up mess. This word can be seen on top of that word because I've made the bottom of that word a little transparent. So that's the effect that we're going to create now. To do that, we have selected our word and right now it's just on a solid fill. We need to give it a gradient. So I'm gonna come over here to my fill and stroke tool. If you don't see it, just click this little arrow and it will pull up all these different tools in here and you can click on the fill and stroke tool right here. It'll take you into this menu. So we're on the fill, that's where we need to be. This is a solid fill. If we come over one, we're going to get a gradient fill. That's what we want. Although we want our gradient to go from top to bottom, whereas this gradient is going from um, right to left. So let's switch that up. We're going to come over here to our um, edit gradients tool. Just click it. And now we have this line that shows up for us. This line is the direction of your gradient. It starts on the left goes to the right. We want it to start on the top and go to the bottom. So you just take this guy and you drag him up here and you take that guy and you drag him down there and you can see that flipped the gradient from top to bottom. But there's some other little changes that I want to make in here. I want the top of this to be really solid. Right now it's kind of transparent and opaque so I'm going to take this first stop, that's what they call these little markers where you change your gradient. I'm gonna take my first stop and I'm just gonna drag it down. Now look at the word howdy. Do you see that little line in the middle or that dot that's moving up and down? That's me changing the opacity of this top section. Now I'm gonna come change it for the bottom section. I'm gonna grab this little stop here and I'm gonna bring it up. And do you see what it's doing over there on the word howdy? You see how it's like literally erasing some of it? You just play around with that until it looks how you want it. If you want a little more room to work with, you can drag this line out a little bit longer and you can just come and do whatever you want. I'm gonna make my line a little bit shorter like it was to begin with. And I'm gonna put my gradient right about there. So the top of my word is completely visible. The bottom, there's parts of it that are almost completely gone. That's how I want mine to look. You play with yours and get it to look exactly the way you want it. When you're done, you just click back into your selector tool and that is what we're gonna be working with. Okay, we don't have to mess with any more of those. Once you've done it once, that's all you need to do. Now for this type of effect, for this falling, flipping look right here, we are going to be using our path effects that are located in Inkscape. In order for a path effect to work, the object you're working on has to be a path. Right now, this is just text. You can see right here it says text. Well, let's turn it into a path. So with it selected, we're gonna to come to path, object to path, and now you see I have a group of five objects. It has now become a path. If you're working on a newer version of Inkscape, Yours is already going to be combined. Mine is a little bit of an older version. I have to combine everything. If you can triple click into here and separate out these letters, they need to be combined. If you are not able to separate these out, don't worry. We don't want them separated out. But if you can, you need to come in here and do this. So get them all separated and then select them all. So I've got the H, I'm holding Shift, and I'm just selecting each letter and I will come to path and union and now I have a path with 248 nodes. I don't have a path with five objects. I just have one path with a bunch of nodes. I can no longer separate any of this out. If I triple click into it, I get all these weird nodes. That's what we need. We're gonna put our path effect on now. So with our word selected, come to path, path effects, and it's gonna pull up this little menu over here for you. And it's empty right now, that's because we need to add an effect. Just click the little arrow, 
and the effect we're going to add is called perspective envelope. It's this one right here. I'll just click on it. And there are a couple little settings that we need to make, actually just one. We need to click this box, mirror movements in vertical. That means whatever I do on the right will be mirrored on the left. That's what we need. Okay, let's start making this text flip. So we've applied our path effect, but nothing really changed. That's because we need to access the nodes to be able to change it. I want you to come and click your little edit paths by node tool and you're going to get all this craziness. Um, if yours doesn't have all the crazy little nodes, that's fine. If it just has one, two, three, four white diamonds, that's perfectly fine. All we need to work with are those white diamonds. Once you have these white diamonds visible, you've got your path effect turned on, you've selected your nodes. I want you to take your first little white diamond and just scooch it in a little bit. Not very much, just a little bit. And then come up here, right click your word and duplicate it and you have another white diamond. This one, we're going to move up and scooch in. Duplicate, we have another white diamond. It's always gonna be at the end of the last thing that you did. So we're going to scooch in, move up. Let's do it one more time. Right click, duplicate, another white diamond, scooch in, move up. Now that looks like a big mess, I know. Don't worry, I'm gonna do this a couple times for you so that you can get it. Let's click back into our selector tool and you will see if I pull all of these apart, I have the beginning of that flip text effect. It was that easy. And what I'm lining up is I'm taking this word and I'm just placing it on top of the part that the gradient um, has whited out, has made transparent for me. And with this type of effect, the more often you do it, the less of that white gradient you're gonna get at the bottom. So when we come down to this last one here, there is no white gradient at the bottom. Okay, so there they all are. I'm gonna drag a box around everything. I'm gonna get my alignment tool. It's this one right here. Again, if you don't see it, just click this little arrow and you can come and look for your alignment tool over in here. It's right there, align and distribute. But anyways, so I'm gonna click it and I'm just going to center everything and it looks like it already was pretty well centered. And then I will right click and group all of this together. Okay, now right click again, duplicate. I have two of these here now. If I drag this one down and I come in, flip it. I'm about to mirror everything right here. That's it. That's all you do guys. There's your total effect right there. And then you come and get whatever you're putting on top of it. Come to file import and go find that little bow that I had. Where is that bow? There it is. It's pretty big. Let me make it smaller. And again, this is just a graphic I got off of Creative Fabrica. You just put that on there, wherever you want it. And there is your design. To get this exported, you'll want to select it all, group it together. I did right click and group. And then I'm just going to come over here to my export menu. If you don't see it, um, you can do this thing here again. If it's not there, for some reason I think that it's not. No, it is there. But if you don't find it, you can also come over here to file and export and it will pull up this export menu for you. There's a few different things we can do from here. We can export this whole page or we can just export the graphic. I'm only gonna export the graphic. So I've got selection, export selection, um, export selected only. You'll want to name it, tell it where you want it to go and hit the export. And that's it, you're all done. But just in case some of that was a little confusing, I am going to redo every bit of it for you. If you've already got it, go create your own and show me what you've done. If you wanna stick around, I'll do it one more time for you. 
So we're going to get our text. We're going to type our word. And it's already in that font because it was the last thing that I used. And it's already in the color I want because it was the last thing I used. I love that Canva remembers. I'm sorry, that Inkscape remembers that. Okay, here's our word. Let's get that gradient. We're gonna to come to our fill and stroke tool. We're gonna to click into the fill and take it off of the solid fill and put it onto a gradient fill. Then we're gonna switch that gradient around. We're gonna get our gradient edit tool. We're gonna take the square to the top, the circle to the bottom. I'm just moving them to where they're pretty much in the middle. And then we drag this down the solid fill and the transparent fill until your word looks how you want it. I want my solid fill a little bit more. There we go. That's what I'm going to go with. Now we're going to turn this into a path. So I'm going to go back into my selector tool. Path, object to path. If your paths are separated, we need to unite them. So I have selected each letter. I'm going to come to path and union. And now we're ready to put on, put on our path effect. So while it's selected, path, path effects, and you'll push the little plus down here to pull up all the different path effects and we are using perspective envelope select that make sure that you mirror movements in vertical and then come and click your nodes tool and it will pull up all of your nodes and we are just working with these little diamonds the first move we make is just to scrunch our diamond in a little bit now we right click and duplicate now we scrunch our diamond in a little bit more and bring it up. Right click, duplicate, get just the white diamond. Why isn't it wanting to let me have my white diamond? Well, I'm gonna come grab this white diamond. Scrunch in, push up, right click, duplicate. It does not like that white diamond. Scrunch in, push up. You can do that however many times you want. I just do it four, I think that works out well. Hit my selector tool to get out of everything we've just done and start stacking my designs. And again, you'll just stack them however you think looks nice. But I do um, come in and center everything once I've got it stacked how I think it's gonna look good. Um, I come and drag a box around everything get my alignment tool, make sure I'm all centered up. And I do want to move this howdy up just a bit. All right, I think that's gonna be good. Okay, so I'm gonna group all this together. You can right click and group or you can just hit Control G. And then we're gonna duplicate, right click, duplicate or Control D, however you wanna do it. Drag that down flip it, use this flip selected objects vertically, it's going to mirror everything. And I love how easy, easy, easy that is. I'm gonna center both of these together. Again, come and import your design that you wanna put on top of it. Man, that wind is crazy, it just blew something over. Okay, shrink that down, put it on there, and you're good to go. That's all there is to making these awesome flip text designs. All right, guys, we'll see you next time.